All right, we are back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast, bringing you our third segment. And our third segment is going to be uh, venturing away from the, what the first two segments were about, which was about the big uh, news of last night, which was Blake Snell finally signing and him signing with the San Francisco Giants. So this is going to be um, something different about that, of course. So what we're going to be talking about is the opening day starters for each team. They were announced um, today. They were finalized today. A lot of teams had already announced them, but we now know all, all the matchups. So, uh, yeah, going to give my uh, my full thoughts on all these and uh, – yeah, let's get into it. So the first game we have is March 20th, which, of course, is tomorrow. It is at uh, 6.05 a.m. Uh, I will not be awake for that. I don't know about you guys, but I will not be getting up at 6 a.m., unfortunately, to uh, watch that to watch one game. Um, it's not really opening day because opening day is what I've known it as, of what I've grown up on, is, is what, you know, sorry, I don't know brain malfunction there uh opening day to me is 15 games all slated around uh, in, from one four seven ten all these different times every player is introduced it's you know you got the ribbons on the field that's what my uh, opening day is this is just one game and it's not even in america i think it's great what they're doing with the soul series i do i think bringing this to bringing baseball to other countries is always amazing especially one as prevalent in baseball as Korea is, I think the Padres and Dodgers are the perfect choice, because um, other than the po- you know other than the Padres having a lot of Korean players on their roster, I also think both uh, there's a lot there's a big um, Asian population in California with the Dodgers and the Padres, so I think it made a lot of sense in that ways. But going on to the opening day starters, no real surprise it is Tyler Glasnow for the Dodgers and you Darvish for the Padres. Both teams are having different opening day starters than last year. Last year for the Dodgers, it was Julio Rios, whose MLB career is most likely done after some, after another allegation of domestic violence. Uh, so obviously he will not be on the team. And uh, the Padres was Blake Snell, who just signed with the Giants, of course. So uh, good matchup here. Darvish, of course, great, great pitcher. Glass now, um, great, great pitcher. Really excited to see what he does in Dodger blue. Really excited to see that hair flowing in Dodger Blue. Going to be really, really nice. So, yeah, definitely a game I'm looking forward to. I just wish it was a little later. Um, I'll try to catch the end of it, potentially. But um, still uh, still a good game. And uh, still a game I'll be recapping on here tomorrow, most likely. Uh, next after that, we have going to the real opening day, in my opinion. Thursday, March 28th. Brewers at my Mets, 1.10 p.m. Uh we will most likely be covering this game on stream as I will be streaming at 3.30, so I do not, I do not think the game will be over by then, but uh, it is possible. Uh, so for the Brewers, it is Freddie Peralta starting his first opening day start. Uh, last year, of course, was Corbin Burns, who just graduated to the Orioles a while ago, so uh, obviously we'll not be starting for them. And for the Mets, it'll be Jose Quintana, who I don't think anyone expected to be starting opening day, but after the Kodai Senga injury, that he'll be out around a month or so. Quintana was the obvious choice, him being the number two in the rotation. The first opening day start for Quintana, um, the first left-hander to first left-hander to start opening day for them since Sean Neese in 2013. Last year was Max Scherzer, who of course was traded at the deadline, so uh, he will not be starting for them. So uh, yeah, good matchup here. Two guys who have to fill in and be the ace for the teams after some injuries and trades. So uh, definitely, uh, definitely something to we'll look forward to, and definitely something uh, I'll be watching here. Uh, we next have Braves and Phillies, a divisional matchup at 3.05 p.m. Eastern. Uh, for the Phillies, it will be Zach Wheeler, his first opening day start. I think he's definitely earned it from Aaron Nola. Aaron Nola is a great player. He started last year, of course, but I think Wheeler's shown himself to be the much better pitcher at this point. He's broke out so much since coming over to the Phillies, and I think he is one of the best pitchers in baseball, and I, I'm really happy for him seeing him getting the opening day start, seeing him get the uh, credit he deserves. After that, we have Spencer Strider for Atlanta. Uh, no surprise here. Strider is one of the better pitchers in baseball. Um, I mean, one of the, has some of the best pitches in baseball. Uh, is taking over for Max Fried, who was the starting pitcher last year for opening day. Strider has now become virtually their ace, I think, especially with Fried most likely being his last year in Atlanta. They're trying to uh, pass the torch per se, to Strider once Freed leaves to make it as smooth as possible. 
So I, Freed and uh, Strider are both very good pitchers, both neck and neck for to the ace of the Braves staff. But I agree with the decision. I do think Strider is better, and I think he deserves it. So congrats to him. Congrats on being so young and doing it. And, uh, yeah, excited. Uh, Angels at Orioles. Um, a- the Orioles will, of course, be starting newly acquired ace Corbin Burns, uh, his first making his first start as not a Milwaukee Brewer. Last year, their opening day starter was Kyle Gibson. Yes, the team that won 101 games, their opening day starter was Kyle Gibson. That's pretty incredible, I'd say. So definitely a big upgrade for the Orioles here. I'm um, really looking forward to Corbin Burns in Baltimore and seeing what he can do and seeing how this does end up. So definitely a, uh, something to watch here and something that I'm really, really looking forward to. Uh, for the Angels, Patrick Sandoval, he gets his first start of his career on opening day. Since Otani did leave, he is the ace now. Ace, quote-unquote. He's not really the ace, but they don't have much pitching, so kind of the best they got right now. Uh, still a good pitcher. Uh, the first left-hander to start for the Angels since 2009 when it was uh, Joe Saunders. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to his season. Looking forward to seeing what he can do in the absence of Otani. And, yeah, really looking forward to his season and uh, if he can bounce back a little bit. He's had some rough seasons, but I think there's still a lot of potential in there. So a lot of stuff he has, and really looking forward to uh, seeing how his season gets off. Uh, we finally have a repeating opening day starter for the Minnesota Twins. It is now Pablo Lopez. Started last year after coming over in a trade from the Marlins for Luis Arias. The clear pick, in my opinion, for the Twins opening day starter. One of the better pitchers in baseball. Guy who's really flourished since coming to Minnesota. Was a great pitcher in Miami, yes, but I think he's definitely broken out with Minnesota. Led up to a lot of his potential and has become a really, really good player. Is making a second opening day start for them for a reason. Is now definitively the, the ace after Sonny Gray left, who might have had a better season than him last year, but I think most people would take Pablo Lopez over Sonny Gray still. So... Yeah, definitely uh, definitely happy for Pablo Lopez and definitely looking forward to seeing what he can do in his second opening day start against the Royals. Uh, the Royals will be starting... Uh, sorry, the uh, page is, uh, it is malfunctioning here. Uh, the Royals will be starting Cole Reagans, which is expected for me. Reagans came over in the trade for Wildest Chapman last year and absolutely broke out. I mean, was so, so good with the Royals. His fastball was amazing. His pitches overall were amazing. And, I mean, he definitely deserves this opening day start 100%. So I'm really happy for him. Really excited to see what he can do with the Royals. And I think this is definitely the right decision. I don't think anyone expected him to be this good when he came over in that random start, win that random trade. I mean, he posted a 2.64 ERA and 26 consecutive scoreless innings with the Royals since coming over. He's 20, 26 years old. A guy the Royals can build around, I think, was one of the big reasons they spent this offseason trying to improve around their core. So, yeah, definitely uh, definitely excited for him and definitely excited to see what he can do and build off his season last year. I'm a big fan of him and really hoping he is really, really good. Last year, their opening day starter was Zach Granke, who I don't really know what's happening with him. I think it's still a chance he signs back as he is very close to 3,000 strikeouts. But he's not that good anymore anymore. Uh, not that good anymore, frankly. So um, I don't think he would have been the opening day starter anyways. After that, we have White Sox and Tigers. I talked about it yesterday, but the surprise for the White Sox is Garrett Crochet being their opening day starter. After trading Dylan Cease, they didn't really have a bona fide ace. And I think if anyone was to step up, I think Crochet does make a lot of sense. Uh, turning in from, Turning in from a reliever to a starter now, is a great decision for him, and I think he's going to really flourish. He's the ninth pitcher in the last 110 years to make his first career start on opening day, uh, joining a lot of great names here, including Lefty Grove and Jim Bagby. So, yeah, I'm really, really intrigued to see how Crochet does as a starting pitcher and really, really excited to see how he does end up. I think he has a lot of great stuff. He was drafted as a starting pitcher, obviously. Only came up as a reliever out of necessity for the White Sox and kind of stood in that role. And I'm excited they are transitioning him to a reliever. And again, I'm super excited to see what he can do in that role. Tarek Skubal will be starting for the Tigers. He missed the first three months of last year recovering from flexing, flexor tendon surgery. 
Um, he locked in in June, though, posting a 2.8 OERA, 7.29K 7 over walk ratio. Two, he only had a 2 FIP. So he was done really, really well. This is a guy I'm really looking forward to watching break out. I think he can. Uh, filling in for Eduardo Rodriguez, who obviously left for Arizona in the offseason. So definitely a big guy I'm watching, and I'm really excited to see what he can do in that role for the Tigers. After that, we have Pirates Marlins making his second consecutive opening day start. Mitch Keller, fresh off the extension, is the Pirates' ace as of right now and will be for a little while after getting that big extension, is part of their future. Really looking forward to seeing what he can do off that extension, seeing if he can build off that season. And yeah, super excited to see what he can do again this week, Marlins lineup, and if he can uh, dice him up. After that, we have Hazel Cesardo making his first opening day start for his hometown Miami Marlins, replacing Sandy Alcantara, who of course is out for the year with Tommy John. Um, I think Luzardo can become a real ace, can become a guy that is going to be ahead of their rotation for a long, long time, and is going to become a really, really good pitcher. I think he could potentially be traded at the trade deadline if the Marlins do perform like I expect them to, which is not very well. So that's something to watch here, but... Lazardo's a great pitcher, and I don't think Marlins could have asked for a better person to be their opening day starter. After that, we have Cardinals at Dodgers. Um, it's not opening day for the Dodgers, of course, because they opened in Seoul. But for the Cardinals, it is. It is Miles Michaelis making his third opening day start. Wow. That is sad for the Cardinals. I mean, My Michaelis, he's a, good, he's a good pitcher. I don't want to, you know, get anything wrong here. He's a good pitcher. But he's making your second consecutive opening day start for the for the Cardinals shows just how lacking their pitching has been because in no way is he an ace in this league. I'm sorry. He's just not. So I think that is kind of embarrassing for them. Um, again, he's not bad, but he's just not an ace and a guy I would think of being a, a guy in opening day. So uh, hopefully he can hopefully he can take this team to new heights, make their pitching staff somewhat okay again with Sonny Gray being hurt. Not a great start who is slotted into their opening day starter. But yeah, hopefully hopefully Miles Michael has proved me wrong. I hope so. For the Nationals, making his first opening day start is Josiah Gray, who has become their ace now after a really strong season last year. He performed really, really well, finally broke out, finally became the guy that they were hoping for when they traded for him in the Max Scherzer trade. Has become really, really well, has become a face of that Nationals franchise. And yeah, really looking forward to seeing what he can do this opening day. Last year it was Patrick Corbin. Patrick Corbin's not very good. I don't think that's saying anything too surprising here. So it does make sense they replace him with a guy who is younger and who is better. So overall, good for the Nationals for finding a guy who can replace him. For the Reds here, it is Frankie Montas making his third opening day start. First with the Reds, obviously signed a one-year contract with them in the offseason. Is replacing their opening day starter of last year, Hunter Green. I'm really looking forward to a Montas bounce back season. If you've listened to the podcast a lot, I've talked a lot about Montas and that red signing, how I think it's really a good signing for them. I'm really, really fascinated to see how he does perform, and I think it was a great signing overall for them. And, yeah, I'm looking forward to watching him. I think him, Lodolo, and Green are going to be make a real nice top three at that rotation. After that, we have Blue Jays and Rays. We have Jose Barrios making his fourth opening day start. First for the Blue Jays. Last year was Alec Manoa. I don't think that turned out very well. But yeah, Barrios looking for a bounce back season. Not really a bounce back season, I'd say. He had a good season last year. Before that, it was bad. But this year, it's going to be good, hopefully. I think he's a really good pitcher. I think he earned the opening day start with Kevin Gosman being on the show for a little bit. Shouldn't be long, but he's a good fill in for him. He's a good pitcher overall. Zach Eflin making his first opening day start. After being a mediocre career, after, after being a mediocre pitcher, really his whole career with the Phillies, has really found a spark with the Rays organization, like most people do. His hometown team signed there on a mediocre contract last year, but has turned out super, super well. Did really, really well last year in the Rays. Boasted a 3.50 ERA in 177 innings. It doesn't mean much, but he did lead the AL in wins. Wins are kind of a meaningless stat nowadays in baseball, but still notable, I guess. So last year it was Shane McClanahan, who I still think is the ace of that team. But with him being on the shelf for most likely the entire year. It does make sense to uh, have have Eflin there and have Eflin be the opening day starter. Next, we have everyone's two favorite teams, the Yankees and Astros. Everyone loves them, don't they? Uh, first, the Yankees. Last year was Cole, of course. 
Obviously, he will not be starting this year with the injury news that he is going to be out for a few months. Not great for them, and it is going to be Nestor Cortez filling in. Marcus Stroman declined the role to keep up his pitching schedule, so it wouldn't really mess it up. After some pitching injuries, after some injuries to his pitching arm last year, I think it does make a lot of sense for him to not really play with his routine. I know a lot of people felt some, some type of way about it, but I don't think it was that big of a deal. Framber Valdez will be starting his third opening day start for the Astros. No real surprise here. He's their best pitcher. He's one of the better pitchers in baseball. And a guy I'm really looking forward to watching and I think is really, really good. Uh, after that here, we have the Giants and Padres. The Giants, it will be Logan Webb, who is their bona fide ace. Came in second in the Cy Young voting last year. They have the guy who came in first now, Blake Snell. But I think Logan Webb's a better pitcher. He's going to be ready for the start of the season which Snell is not going to be considering he just signed and has to build his way up most likely. So easy pick for uh, the Giants here, making his third opening day start for them. Logan Webb for his hometown team. Good job for him. Great pitcher. Uh, the Padres, we also don't know who it's going to be. Obviously, it was Blake Snell last year, and he is not going to be pitching this year for them because he just signed with the team. We're talking about the Giants, and they then they then their own opening day is in Seoul, so we're not sure who they're going to be playing pitching in this game. Next, we have Cubs at the world champion Rangers. Cubs will be starting Justin Steele in his first opening day. Obviously, had a breakout season last year, became a real ace in this league, was high in Cy Young voting, so it only makes sense that he is going to be their opening day starter. No, there's a Neil Rose surprise here. Marcus Stroman was the starter last year, and of course, he left for the Yankees. Nathan Avaldi will be starting his fourth opening day for the Rangers, replacing Jake DeGrom, who started last year, obviously went under Tommy John, so will not be back for a long time. Good for Valdi. Really has found a home in Texas after a great season last year. His hometown team growing up in Alvin. Probably the best pitcher ever from Alvin, Texas. Which is a joke because Nolan Ryan is also from there. So kind of kind of hard to follow in those footsteps. But he's been a really good pitcher. So I don't think he has anything to be ashamed about. So good for Nathan Valdi finding a home in his hometown. And really happy for him. Uh, Guardians at A's, which is at 10 o'clock on Eastern Time. Shane Bieber making his fifth opening day start for Cleveland. No real surprise here. He's their ace of that staff. He's a really good pitcher. Not going to get into this too much. Potentially his last start for the Guardians on opening day. I think so. Alex Wood is making his first opening day start for Oakland. No offense to Alex, Co uh, Alex Wood, but I think this shows where the EAs are as a franchise. Alex Wood, fine pitcher. Nothing wrong with him to have him on your team, but to have him as your opening day starter just shows where the A's are right now. Man. Uh... Red Sox and Mariners now. Brian Bayo is starting opening day. Uh, first one as a Major League Pro. First of many, I would say, as a guy who's going to be their ace for a long time. Super excited for him and really happy for him. Last year it was Corey Kluber, who then re who retired this year for having one of the worst seasons I've ever seen with my own eyes last year in Boston. Really, really rough. I don't think Red Sox fans want to be reminded of it. So good for Bayo for getting the opening day start. And again, as I said, first of many. Really looking forward to watching him develop as an ace over these years. Luis Castillo with Seattle, his fourth one. Obviously, that split with, between Seattle and, and Cincinnati was the opening day starter last year. A great, great pitcher. And no surprise here that he is their opening day starter. They have a lot of good pitchers, but he's the clear ace of that staff. Ending it off here with the final game, we have Rockies and Diamondbacks. Rockies will be starting Kyle Freeland for his third opening day. Him starting three opening day is, again, indicative of where the Rockies are as a franchise and how little pitchers they have. Kyle Freeland, fine player, but not an opening day starter caliber guy in my opinion. And Zach Gallen will be starting his second opening day, consecutive one as well, for the Diamondbacks. Has really become their ace and has become a guy that is one of the best pitchers in baseball, so no surprise there. All right, that segment was a little long, but I'm sure you guys were okay with that. Uh, so we're going to move on to our final segment after that, which is general news around the league. I mean, it's a little different than the usual news around the league segments, but we'll explain when we get there. All right, so uh, we'll see you after the break. Thanks. Bye.